Konzo from Kombi coming up from the dam at Yuri Kaya going west, but there's also Konzo going east on Wilberg Road. What is that over there? What is that over there? With a baboon? Hyena. Wild dog! <laughs> no, that's baboon. Baboon? Yeah. So they're Far from each other, then, uh, I think he's just calling for another baboon. Uh, what's that over there? Bark of a tree. Now there's geese shouting. Uh, yeah. And here we are chatting away. Welcome to Juma Game Reserve, everybody. Beautiful, beautiful Saturday morning. My name is Mark. And Seb is with me on camera. Tara is in final control. Got the sun in my eyes and the wind in my face. Uh, isn't that, you see that fallen tree? Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, he's on there. Yeah, I see that now. Um, there's also some giraffe up on the northern end of the open area. But I think let's just go to the dam quickly. Please let me know if uh, anybody saw anything at the dam last night. Juma water hole cam. I had some guinea fowl complaining, a few guinea fowl in a tree earlier, but the problem was that most of the guinea fowl were on the ground and there were impala around and they weren't too fussed about anything. Actually, temperatures. As you can see, I'm wearing a jacket. And then I am a little bit of a reptile when it comes to temperature. I know people who would be in a t-shirt right now.
quiet for there to be anything here at the dam right now. I'm going to go north. I want to go north onto Biffles of Cutline. Heard some cats there as well last night. Uh, see if they were moving about. And then I do want to make my way to the Hyena Den at some point early. At the moment there are vehicles there already. Only because there's something there that's not hyena. Big hyena tracks crossed the damn wall last night, so somebody must have seen them. I think we'll stop. We've got a hippo here at the dam. I think we'll try and see her. Maybe this is the one with the youngster. Heron is gone. Oh yeah, I've got to remember not to say these animal names because I've got to try and beat, not beat, I've got to try and keep up with Seb and Tara. Gosh, the algae is starting. Uh, excuse me, Hippo, can you just pop your head up, please? Maybe later we'll come and look for some reptiles here. Geese are shouting, looks like because they're geese fighting, not because of a predator. There's a youngster and it's suckling, it's just its nostrils will pop up above the... Oh, there's another hippo. Nose is coming up. But yeah, sometimes in the, with a young hippo, when it's suckling, it's so quick that its nostrils just appear above the surface and takes a breath and goes back down to suckle again. Henry, come in. Yeah, morning. Where are you now? Okay, copied. Did you go up to Biffles or Cutline? No, I'm Konzo up there from Gala. Yeah, I did copy. Thanks, Tex. I thought you had uh, three movers there already. I'm in as well. I'm um, just going to check up on Biffles of Cutline. I'll do a loop, come back, Aubrey's, and come round there. Confirm um, MPC Kai as always. And no MPC there. Copy, thanks. Interesting.
Okay. I haven't seen a little one pop up yet. So maybe three hippo. There's a little one. That was on four. Um, but that wasn't a new baby, that. Was that the baby? I wonder if that's the baby everyone was talking about. Yes, it is. Not a very new one. But it is a youngster. But it must have been born in one of the other dams. Because we haven't seen it yet. Okay, questions are coming. Let's go up on Vugu Road. Take some questions and find some... Something to ID. Get your thinking caps on at this time of a Saturday morning. Or Friday night. Whichever is appropriate. And the layer. Oh, we could have done that bird. Could have done that bird. Good morning, Carolyn. Welcome to Juma this morning. Interesting question from Carolyn. And a few days ago I would have said, I haven't the vaintest idea. But Carolyn is asking about a baboon at Pete's Pond that is somewhat of an anomaly. And I only know about it because somebody sends something in. Somebody sent something in uh, the other day when Seb was on drive about a baboon at Pete's Pond that has got silver or white hair. Carolyn's saying she thought it was a silverback, which of course, if it was, it would be very lost. But I believe the story that I've learned from, and I can't remember, I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was. Was it Ed? Maybe. Somebody sent me the story that this baboon, for some reason, lost all its hair. And what came back was this silvery white, grey, well, I don't know whether it's silver or white. I, maybe it's white. But that's all I can tell you, Carolyn. I can't tell you anything further. I know that in some cases with humans, people's hair can suddenly go white through some form of shock or through some external reason. Um, but I don't know what the reasons were for this particular baboon. It's n I've never seen it before. I've never been to Pete's Pond. I've never, so I don't really know what Mashatu looks like. Uh, it is a considerable distance from here. Although the location I don't think has much to do with it at all. Here's a flower for you, but it's not so nice. It's getting old. Mark, you go. Mushrooms! Station calling Mark. Never mind. Then, I suppose. mushrooms are starting. I've ordered a mushroom book but I can't find the mushroom book that I want. wasn't on Kalahari. Anyways, it's a beautiful, although damaged, gardenia flower. Several roads have been closed, this one too now. Elephant, we've had an elephant that's been somewhat disturbed. 
I wonder if I can get through here without getting torn by the snob thorn. I noticed a few roads yesterday that have been closed. Can't get through the back of Chelapan anymore because of trees that are down. And I reckon it's all the same elephant and I think he's been in a bit of a bad mood. Because they're all knob thorns and they're all closing roads. And this is what happens when elephants get upset with the vehicle. Uh oh, she's going to Impala Plains. Just to fill you in, Karula and the Cubs, well Karula at first, the Cubs had just arrived near the Hyena Den on Zaez Road, but they're moving now, they're moving west towards Impala Plains. There are already a number of vehicles there, which, and just seen Henry racing there now, which means that he'll be first in lineup. So we're just going to have to wait and see if the guys give us a break. Pack of dogs at Nkoro Pan. Sadly, that's a little too far for them to come this way. But that's nice to know. Lucky Nkoro. Uh, if any station's interested, just heard that there's Madacha at Nkoro. So, yes, Carolyn, that I think is as much as I can say about the white-haired, silver-haired, grey baboon. Grapevine that uh, this Madach on Nkoro's camera at their dam at the moment. So Kim, hello Kim. When are the Woodlands Kingfishers and the African Hoopers coming back? Hoop Hoopers have been here all along. Hoopers just haven't been calling because they don't call during the dry season. Um, Woodlands Kingfisher, well now there's the rub because it could be any time in the next two weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. So I've got a list, not that many names on it actually. We've got a list of a number of people who've sent in their guesses for the dates of the Woodlands Kingfisher. The same as we've got a few people who've guessed dates of the first impala lambs. Now, these are dates for us to see them. And I guess we can, with the woodlands, we can go with the first woodland herd. Because often we hear them before we see them. Um, as far as impala birds are concerned, other guides might see them. But it's got to do with when we can have it on camera for the first time. So we're going to be looking a little bit closer at impala perhaps. I'll see if I can find you a hoopoo. I don't think the European hoopoo's come down this far. You're in the wrong channel, Jacques. Another tree. Down. and cubs venturing almost to the hyena then. Interesting. Hope they don't go to Triple M. 
and we will go around towards Sandy Patch and head them off that way. Yeah, Mark, you go. Hey, Jacques, no, I can't. It's just our viewers that watch us have mentioned it. Um, I can find out for you. Yeah, I'll try and get hold of one of the guys. Okay, stand by. Any in Coral Station copy? Oops. Yeah, thanks, Tara. Maybe one of our viewers who might be watching in Coral. Um, if you can tell us where those wild dogs are moving from Nkoro camera. Nkoro's dam. Okay, so no cat tracks here. Tamburti dam. Now, although Nkoro is fairly far, those dogs could be here in an hour or two if they come this way. So... 30 years of Wow. Maybe it's a pack of 22 or so. But which way are they moving? That's the, that's the critical question. Okay, if somebody can let us know, although it's probably difficult from the camera and Coral to figure it out. Uh, is y'all coming? I see that we can get on camera we're gonna start off we're gonna kick start my list maybe Tara can write it for me on that piece of paper because I didn't bring a pen to tick it off from my book there's one stop uh, never mind try another one hang on Tara Ryan, come in. Uh, good on you. Uh, I don't know if you copied earlier, but evidently on camera now, Tinkoro is a very big pack of dogs. Yeah, I can't raise anybody on the radio. Maybe you can get some info. You did, Tar. Okay. Those birds. Beautiful liquid call of this bird. The rest of the family is further back. That will kickstart my list. No, give me one. No, you can give me one. Yeah. Hello Janine. <laughs> Janine. 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 Okay. Janine. Janine spelled Jean. Neen. Oh, Washington.
Okay. First bird. How many hippos in the herd? I think we could call it a raft of hippos. Or a pod of hippos. Collective nouns are not my forte. Speaking of hippos, we've actually just passed a big stain in the road. And here's another one. areas where the hippo has sprayed his dung. Okay, Becky's saying dogs headed west from Ankoro Camp. So we need to get to Gari Main if they're running west. Karul and cubs have entered some very thick bush. They're losing a Ephraim, come in. So, I don't, we don't really have a total number of hippos. We can't give you a number because the hippos change waters all the time. They're between Biffleshook Dam and Gauri Dam and Big Dam on Biffleshook and dams on well, Treehouse Dam, Twin Dams, and other dams further south of us, the hippos never stay in the same place. So, at one time we've had 14 hippos at Gauri Dam. I think that's about the most that have collected there. But there isn't really a fixed number in this group, I don't think. Not that I can tell you about at any rate. Mostly because they go to areas where we don't know. And of course, there could be some hippo Let's say we had three hippo at the dam and they disappeared for a day and then a few days later we had three hippo. We don't know if they're the same three hippo that came back or if it's a different three hippo. It's hard to tell. They have a fairly large area that they cover. Okay. Two names, Phyllis for the long tail shrike. Thank you, Phyllis. Shalom. And Ches Hill with the magpie shrike. Both names correct. I'll take the old names because I'm old. Durr. Old fashioned. Old hand. Old hat. And I remember most of the old names. I'm still learning the new names. So. Magpie Shrike, or Long-Tailed Shrike, for the first bird. I was hoping to find cat tracks, but I'm not seeing any. They must have been further north in Biffleshook, moving to the west. Maybe we can check on Sandy Patch North. See if they might have, maybe, headed towards Sydney's Dam. I did hear them last night. Moving. Must have finished the kill. Okay, I see an animal and I'm hoping it's going to stay there for us. Termite mound. Take note of a very long tail with a black tip to it. And not an, an animal we don't really see very often. Well, we do, but very fleeting glimpses of it. Solitary as opposed to communal, like some of some others of its kind, or some other species. Sunning itself. <coughs> oh, the Wahlbergs flying overhead. 
doesn't seem to be too worried about the Wahlberg's eagle which is because mostly or rather the Wahlbergs mostly hunt birds rather than small mammals both Wahlbergs Wahlberg's eagle can't see them now they've gone down below the tree line but they must be hunting Ephraim come in Joy. Was, it, was that Joy or Joyce? Joy. Is it Joy Boobo? Joy the Owl. Joy, do you know that Boobo is the scientific name for the large owls? I'm sure you know that. Joy came back with the right answer. That is a slender mongoose. A genuine a little ricky ticky tarvy. Hello moth got a moth on my microphone. Julie in Indiana. Hello Julie. Wondering if there's a, no a name for the noise that hippos make. Kim okay, also asking the name. Um, grunting? No. <coughs> Honking? Thanks, Tara. Honking is more geese like. Oh, I guess I guess the answer to that is not not that I know of if, that, if there's a special name for it. Maybe there is, but I don't know it. Snorting, grunting, honking. There go the Wahlbergs. I should try and point something out to you if we can just get in front of this tree and we can see. If maybe Seb can catch them as they're turning. And I want you to look very carefully. Well, you don't have to look that carefully, but what's so distinctive about a Wahlberg's eagle when it's flying is that it's got a very narrow, straight tail. And other brown eagles and, and that are same size or bigger have either wedge-shaped or broader tails. And that's the one characteristic of the Wahlbergs. But unfortunately, battling to just keep them in, in view not the easiest thing to follow a bird in flight. Come back in front of us. Uh, almost in, right up ahead of us. And there's a lot of wing flapping because they're fairly low and they are not, there are no thermals right now. Sometimes when there are thermals and they're soaring it's a lot easier to see because they don't move their wings and they move a lot slower. 
but um, it's almost as though they're two planks stuck together in the form of a cross the wings are straight the tail is straight Morning, Steve. <coughs> Question from Steve about hippos, asking if it's true that hippos have killed more people in Africa uh, than any other animal. Mammal, yes, Steve. I'd say possibly the mammal that's killed more people than any other. Animal that's killed the most people is either the honeybee or the mosquito. Crocodiles take their fair share of people. Snakes take their fair share of people. Not that many lion and leopards. getting a message it looks like they went east from the camera of the dogs east means going back into Kruger yes there's that that scrub here is oh there's a nice bird to ID stay there That's a nice one. That you're going to need a, a bird book or a birder, RC or Laura or a bunch of people who are birders. Dave, Mike Moss is not a birder but taken photographs of a lot of them. Facial markings and of course the colour of its breast are important there if we can see it if it would turn around. If it wasn't hiding. Uh. Yeah, you can see that streaky breast now. Belly. Okay. Morning, Linda. Well, I suppose I can't really use it as a checklist because I've been flying around, I've been talking about them, but there's one of the Wahlbergs. Now perched. I don't know if it's the same as the pair that were flying, one of the pair that was flying they are quite numerous this time of year. <coughs> Linda asking about the elephants. Are they being destructive and how many? Uh, Linda, I can't really give you an answer there, I'm afraid. Uh, I've just noticed a number of new... Tra I wouldn't call it destructive. I don't like using the word destructive in the same sense as a sentence as an elephant. 
they modified the environment, that's for certain. I think that's an old Wahlberg's nest. But I think it's one elephant. I wouldn't be able to tell you whether he's in must or not. What I can tell you is that I know there was an elephant bull that was upset by a vehicle yesterday or the day before I heard about it. And elephants do that when they get upset with a vehicle. I've had it happen in the, up in the Timbavati a lot and I was managing a camp up there. When elephants get a fright, they close the road, they throw a tree across the road, slow the cars down. But uh, having not seen it, Linda, I couldn't really, couldn't really tell you how many or what his reasons are. How it is feeding. You know, there have been elephant around. We noticed there was that one female. She was breaking trees so that the youngsters could feed with her, reach the branches. Some of those trees might be from that scenario. They're not necessarily all the same elephants. But there are a number of new trees across the roads. Oh, look, there's a millipede. One of the first of the season. I've seen a couple, I've seen one or two very big ones. This one's only about three inches long. I've seen, I saw one the other day with one of the big black ones. It's got to be a good seven, eight inches. You can almost see the trail that it made in that soft sand, but now it's moving over harder sand, so you don't see its tracks. But they'll be interesting tracks. It leaves like this little railway line of tracks on soft sand. Now that's a millipede, not a centipede. They don't bite or sting. But they do have a defensive, a foul defensive liquid, well, paste, that contains cyanide. And because of that, not many things eat them. So mushrooms and millipedes, that means that we have humidity and we have moisture. And we have summer. Summer, summer. Okay. Quick look at Sydney's dam. And then we're going south. Get out of the road, millipede. There's no place to play for a millipede. Brenda, did Brenda come back with a ground scraper thrush? Wow, well done Brenda. Very impressive. Not an easy bird for many people. It's a bird we've seen. Oh, a number of people got it right. Okay, now let me know who, please, because I'm interested. I thought Laura would get it. In Finland, Rice, of course. I thought Mike Moss would get it. Lynn, yes. In Canada. Amber's been getting them right, yeah. Ah, oh, Dr. Rita in Florida. All the birders. MJ2. Thank you, everybody. Oh, Bonnie also. Bonnie's also proving pretty good with the birds. Uh, if I could just go a little forward. Just can't see that heron next to that quarry bush. On the other side of the dam, sitting with its wings open. Bless you, bless you. Strange. It's 
strange posture, but this the heron on the other side was sitting with its wings open, but he's closed them now. No sign of the cats. Let's go south. Alright, you could maybe go on to two and get me an update on the ingwe, please. Handheld doesn't work here. I guess the one animal we're not going to be able to use on this challenge will be the rhino. So might as well, everybody might as well tick them off for all of us. Because they are around, we're just not going to see them. But we know that they're here. Thank you. Jack and Carol sent in pictures of the baboon, thank you. I think it was Jack that sent that thing earlier, a couple of days ago maybe. Jack, wasn't it you? Jack Lemon? Um, that's right. And Brenda saying, is it leucistic? Well, it could be. I mean, this is what I first thought. The thing is, partial leucism. But I believe that it was a normal colored baboon lost its hair and the hair came back white so I wouldn't put that that's why I didn't mention leucism because it wouldn't have had a normal color to begin with so that's it, it I don't know I don't know what to think about that baboon
<coughs> Thank you. I wonder if I'm not coming down with an allergy. I've never had allergies before. I don't know if it's the remnants of my cold or... But... Uh, I'm just going to cut the sound for a second while I clear my sinuses. You're going to lose sound. should be back now. I should be less nasally. Hmm. No tracks of any cars here since the rain. Half a kilometer northwest of Parlor Plain. a lot of chatter about the dogs and nobody really knows questions being asked are they north or south of Gauri Main answer coming back don't know there doesn't seem to be any clear indication of where those dogs are and where they're moving yet but good to know that there's a big pack running around from come in quick ID take it off the list big ears are a giveaway and no, it's not an elephant. Ephraim, come in. First standby, second standby. I guess the guys are queuing up for those dogs. They might be moving into Torchwood by the sounds of things. Yeah, Jaka. Oh no, wrong mark. All right, never mind. Yeah, where they now, Jacques? Ephraim, come in. Yeah, I'm four. I'm on Impala Road, power lines. I'm making my way to your lock. Okay, copy. Sorry. It's dawdling. Time to go. So the wild dog are on Torchwood somewhere and 
they are static. In other words, they're lying down for the time being. Uh, but it's the eastern side of Torchwood, towards the Kruger side. Torchwood isn't that big. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't take them very long to, if they were moving west, to hit Cheetah Cut Line. It'll be interesting to just keep track of where they are and what they're doing. Thank you. Kudu. Greater Kudu. Of course, we don't have to have the greater part because we're not going to get lesser Kudu here. But I have to tell you, lesser Kudu are quite incredible antelope. When you, for me, I've, I grew up with Kudu, greater Kudu, because we don't get lesser Kudu in South Africa. So I was quite well into my 30s, no? I was in my 40s already. By the time I saw my first lesser kudu up in East Africa in Tanzania and it, it's incredible because they, they look like a miniature kudu they look like a, a nyala sized kudu the female is about the size of a nyala male a nyala bull and when you have in your mind's eye a picture of a kudu both male and female that are the size that they are the greater kudu it kind of your mind has a bit of a twist trying to get around this lesser kudu the most incredible thing was that I was in, in two places that I lived one up in Kenya in Meru National Park and again in Tarangiri National Park in, in northern Tanzania where I could in one walk I could see lesser kudu and greater kudu in fact there were times in Tarangiri on our walks where we didn't stay, weren't that far apart. You see, greater kudu, lesser kudu, bushbuck, and elant in one walk. Four of the trick there, the spiral horned antelope. Okay, now we're looking for some cats. Agras are calling. Plains. We want to go to the northern side of the Parla Plains. There. It's funny. I've seen them there before. Maybe we'll just sneak up from here. It's a little bit bumpy. Crossing the seat line. that I didn't want to cross the open area because there's a bird there with its babies. We'll go and have a look at it afterwards. Chicks. Pile on the southern end of the open area. I'm not telling you what these animals are because I'm going to use these animals on my checklist. But maybe we don't see these animals for the next 30 days. God forbid. I hope we see them every day. I think 
could go that side first because it's eating. There's one eating there. We've got two this side of us. Quite comfortable. full of feathers. Hello Beverly. Do we see meerkats this far east? No we don't. Not in South Africa, no. Meerkats are much further to the dry western parts of the country. Eating a Franklin I believe. It'll be interesting to who, who caught it. He's had enough, must have finished it. Oh, it was him, little boy. And now that he's left, his sister's coming to see whether there's anything left for her. Feathers. All she's gonna find are feathers. He's gone back to mum. It's just too beautiful. Sure, to the right one. Sure, yeah, somebody's got like 50 frames a second. <laughs> I can't move because we've got to reposition ourselves. So, Ty, who was that? Come first. The answer. Joanne Jam. Thanks, Joanne. Birthday present for Sally. Shimomo. to move out of the way for Ephraim. Morning all. Thank you. Okay. Thank 
Karula is now having a look at this kill to see if there's anything for her. Uh, I just have to stay here. Don't get him, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry to talk. I'm suddenly getting too much static to hear you. And getting lots of news here about things. Um, but just give me a moment because I. So they were waiting for little Shivambalana to finish his. Franklin, he, I'm guessing he must have caught it because he was the one that was eating it. And uh, time to move for them to move now that he's finished eating. Wherever she's taking them, she seems to be taking them somewhere. Um, Rais is sending some info on a couple of incidents that I'm learning about. It was quite, quite playful cats this morning. Uh oh, on the death floor. My special stones from Australia. Thank you, Stacey. I'm going to a termite mound, nice big termite mound. Watch this battalier in the sky. Um, so, sorry, right, Cara, let me try and concentrate on that now. Rexon evidently saying something about, sure, they're having a fantastic game. Sure. Piling into each other up this termite mound. Karula and one of the kids, or is it the two kids? We haven't seen them play like this before. Even get a photograph. So evidently, Rexon was saying Mafufunyan attacked Mishu, and White Cloth's son was the one. Oh, he thinks it's Mishu. White Cloth's son evidently is the one that killed Ntima's last cub. Is that was that also what you were saying, Tara? According to Chitwa's page. Okay, no, I couldn't get any of that. Too much hissing. Um, but it, I, I, I'm getting. Raisa, I'm getting an idea that you're asking questions about aggression and something with regards to these leopards. But I really can't tell you. Uh, I guess she's concentrating on something now. She's looking at something. Something up ahead that she looks like she's interested in. And she's actually signaled to the youngsters to stay put. She's gone hunting. The youngsters have stayed put. She's gone into full stalk and hunt mode. Can you see it? Back again. Try and squeeze through here. Possibly a diker or a stien, but I mean, just see her through here. Yeah, the cubs are joining her again. She's going to stop and.
bush starting to get a bit thick. Um, we, no, I'm not sure. I, I, I'd have to verify all these this information. I could. Oh, oh. after a was that a a Quran? Yeah, a red crested Quran. Made a lunge for it. That's what Kiruda was after. Must have been. They're having a wonderful game, these three. Um, sure, it's thick. Hope these trees are all going to pop up after me. mound that they're heading for now. It'd be nice shade for them. I'll shoot. this termite mound and Boobin heading down to Impala Road and oh, I'm going to get dodgy now signal wise as well as position if she goes any further west we're going to lose her but coming out onto the road now Go to the toilet in the road. Two. Okay, it's gonna move back so that she doesn't. Oh, she's already going off the road. I'm gonna just move forward, move back a bit for her. But she's on a clear mission. <laughs> Wonderful game. A shorter grass area so we should be seeing a bit more of them shortly going into this quarry thicket deeper into the edge of this open area here on Impala Road. Maybe she's got a kill down there somewhere. Whoa. Trees. Tree stumps. Station on Triple M. 
Hello. Hello, who's there? Louis. Hello, Louis. Uh, you're waiting for this ingwe to come out. <laughs> I hope so. I'm getting closer. Daker just ran off. One of the youngsters has gone after it. Now touching on on the road, main road already. Okay, it should be visible from Triple M. I think they know that there's a kill to go to because of the way they're behaving. Maybe she does have a kill. <coughs> I do copy you now. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, can you go for a phone? Yeah, go. I've got Jennifer and Patty. What do they want to know? I want to know how does Karula signal to the youngsters how they stay put? Well, either a look or maybe it's a subtle little wow, it's a little growl. It's this the the twitch of her tail concentration Ears. Oh, these cats are having a fantastic game today. When she's walking like this, her ears are, there's nothing in particular. When she stops and she looks forward, the ears go forward, her tail does certain things. There's just subtle signals. She probably at times she will turn around and growl at them and if they don't listen. But sometimes all it takes is just her concentration and, and a change in her body language. to the road now. This is a dip where we've lost her before with when the cubs were very small. Mm. I and I'm guessing she's just gonna walk straight across the road and carry on with this drainage line. Let's try and get out onto the road. We have to do that anyway. Probably our best bet through here. Glad we at least made it to see them. A little bit of their playing. They've been running so fast. Oh, that's quite deep. Yeah. Uh, it's too deep in there to get out there. Um, maybe we can cross over there. No, the back tail end will. Oh, uh, they're right. Still on our side. They haven't crossed yet. The biggest problem is. I'm stuck 
here. Because I've got a drainage line in front of me, a drainage line on the left of me. Here I am stuck in the middle of you. Where? Uh, Still waiting for one of them. We've only got two of them here. Seen something. I wonder if it's her sister, I mean, her brother that she's looking at. Is she looking at the Impala? Yeah. She's seen the Impala. But then I can hear Franklin there, so her brother's probably the back there. Also looking at the Impala. Squirrel starting to go crazy. Come, Karula. Go show your babies how to do this. So we can go back, reverse back where we came. Hello dear, interesting question, very good question in fact. I need to know why the youngsters stay behind Karula when she goes and hunts. Would she not be with, would they not be with her so that she can teach them? And the answer is leopards don't need to learn. For leopard it's very much an instinctive, an instinctive thing. Something moves, they go for it. Cheat on the other hand, there's a different story. Alright, now. Where was that Impala? Somewhere right in front of you, but it must have moved now. Yeah, I must have. And Karula's starting to come this way now. Um, the problem with leopard is that the youngsters can get a little bit impatient and in the process, if they're with Karula while she's trying to hunt, the tip of their tails might show, something might happen that'll give them, give them away and, uh, and ruin the hunt. So for leopard it's actually, and, and funny enough for lion too, 
it's imperative that the youngsters stay behind. And suddenly there's nobody. No, there's still a car there. Oh, oh no, are you kidding me? Yeah, it's been beeping for like 10 minutes. Okay, something's wrong. Maybe it's that, that cable or something. But uh, the inverter's complaining again. Right, let's see if we can get back a little bit because she's standing on a on that tree now. her head behind the root ball of this knob thorn that's been pushed over or fallen over pushed over I think the roots have been eaten by an elephant She's lying down now. Uh, got found a shade on the other side of that root mass. Leopard from a very very young age, in fact from the first time they open their, well their eyes start clearing and they, and they start seeing the, the world around them will go for anything, grasshoppers, anything that moves within their, their field of vision and it is from that instinctive drive to chase anything that, that, that moves that their, not only their skills are honed but also that that hunting muscles and, 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 and bodies develop to be able to to improve their skills uh, and then of course there's the advantage of a, of a leopard who grows up with a sibling being able to play and to some degree uh, a, lone, a lone leopard cub would play with its mother but it would never have the advantage that a leopard would have who would be growing up with a sibling and the kind of play that they engage in as they're growing up because that play itself is also honing muscle, honing skills to further or rather to, to improve their hunting ability and it's maybe for that reason that they don't necessarily need to see mom hunting and it's for that reason that mom will go off hunting, leave them and come back and fetch them and take them to a carcass the one thing that they might need to learn and that she will do is at first she might open the carcass and feed on it before she brings them to the kill but there will be a time when she will kill something she'll leave it and she'll bring them to the kill and they'll have to learn how to open it and, and, and where to open the carcass to start feeding where to get the best nutrition
Okay, we're going to have to try and move to see her better. I don't know how much longer our drive is going to last because this thing's beeping and I don't know why. Maybe we can just tighten something underneath the, the back. these guys can't use low range okay now that we have space behind us I can move in fact we can just carry on forward we don't have to go back should be able to just keep going forward Oh, two of them are here. Karula's got no. She's gone. No. I don't know where she's gone. She must have gone off hunting. Hello, golden boy. I thought it was Karula hiding here. But it's not. It's the children. Okay, so sorry, that question was about them being close to the vehicle. Does it take a sense of wildness away from it? Sorry, Tara, please go again. That one. I wonder where she went, that cat. Must have been her that ran in. Yeah, so they both. Donna. Hello Donna in Nebraska. Hello. I wouldn't look at me, I'd look at other cars. Is Jacques coming? Donna was asking when they're so close to the vehicle does it take a sense of wildness away because they seem so close, so used to the people, so used to they're getting accustomed to the vehicles, it doesn't take the wildness away In, if anything sometimes it can, can make it even wilder having them close because it can be quite tense sometimes um, Sometimes it can make it feel even more thrilling having them so close. But uh, no, I don't think at any point does it take a sense of wildness away. They're, I wouldn't say they're used to people, they're becoming accustomed to the vehicles. The vehicles and the people are two different entities. And somehow she's gone off probably hunting. Close. She's hissing at Seb now.
Okay, all I can get is Nancy in Indiana, about in Duna, I'm not too sure. I think because I'm in a dip here, the radio is not that great. Pardon? We've got the best, uh, best view. Best view, yeah. yeah. It is a little bit close though. Um, let's stick on her head. little boy Are drooping. We need to. I'll let you again, Seb.
I think what I need to do is just move because I think these other guys need to get a better view of him, of them. And uh, you <coughs> low range little boy. <coughs> Bless you, Seb. He said me, it's not me, it's him. I drive over that jackalberry. Driving over the jackalberry. in the shade. So Rumbalan has moved into the crown of the tree. No, he's coming back. Come back little boy. No. Yeah. There was an impala, she went off after it. camera's got a black screen on and that's because I got my sunglasses and when I turn I was holding it sideways and I was getting a black screen because my glasses are polarized and so is this so I was holding it at right angles to the polarization of my sunglasses And suddenly the screen was going black and I couldn't figure it out. And it's just a beautiful shot of the two of them. But it's going to be... Hard because there's just these little branches in the way. I can... About one out of five, Tara, I can sort of copy you but it's not great it's a lot of hissing you can try
Nancy wants to know if we've seen Induna recently. Not since we saw him with it. Where did we see him? Come to think of it. Where did we see him last? He'd been at the dam. Not in the last few days, Nancy. We saw Mishu a couple of days ago, but not in Duna. Jock from Cheetah Plains needs some lessons on how to drive a Land Cruiser off-road. Or maybe just needs driving lessons, period. Yeah, put yourself in a hole. Hello Gilly, saying that they seem to have a special bond and will let last into adulthood once they leave mom. The bond, it's a natural bond, one has to remember they are siblings, they were, they grew up in the womb together, so yes there is a bond and, and, and um, adulthood w will bring with it competition and will bring with it uh, different circumstances they, they, their hormones will play a big role there so they they won't be it's difficult to predict you know it's, it, when it comes to behavior there's, there's we can never be sure of anything they will definitely recognize each other I and mean, we get the question often whether animals recognize each other and there should be no question whether they do. Um, familial bonds are something that blood connections and familial bonds is something that will never go away. They will definitely recognize each other. Whether they are amicable or not, that is a, a different story. That is something to wait and see. Uh, it would be great to see Mishu and Induna and see how they react to each other now, um, having spent so much time apart. Of course they're going to recognize each other. They spend so much time each other in each other's company. They're not only going to rec they, they, they're going to be s the sounds and smells of each other that they'll recognize as well. Um, there's no there's no set rule as to how they will behave as adults, especially towards each other. Um, there's a strong likelihood that the paths will, will, will lead them in different directions. He might move far away, being a young male, being in an area where there are so many male leopards, um, especially with his two older brothers still hanging around. Who knows whether he's going to even get a chance to, to reach adulthood. Um, the, the, there is a bit of a bottleneck of leopards here, and, and um, the, the, the few leopards 
cubs that have been killed recently have sort of it's 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 been in the making because there are or there is such a pop a, a, a healthy population of leopards here. Got some water. Um I don't know what further I can what further I can say on that. Vivian wants to know. That is an interesting observation, Vivian. And just looking at them now, Shavinzi is looking smaller and petite, more petite than her brother. To some extent, yes. Um, and he is a male. He is going to be growing bigger than her. But yeah, I think perspective might be a little bit skewed here. But uh, just looking at the heads, I mean, she's sitting here in front of... In front, closest to us. And already that she is giving off this 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 uh, impression that she's smaller and, and and more dainty, more feminine, more more just smaller. His head does look a little bit bigger. What's interesting is having the two of them with the, the, their heads so close to each other is being able to see the differences in the facial markings or the head, even the furrowed markings. It's one thing to look at one and then turn around or turn your head and look at another. It's a completely different story when you've got both cats together and you're able to see the same side of each other's faces or each of their faces. Where are you going? Bambalan has got up. They know this area. They've they've been here before as cubs being left behind by Karula. He's crossing he's gonna probably cross the road. He's probably been waiting for that. The drainage line does get a little bit deeper further down. Um what was his name, that guy? Marius, no. Mornay. Mornay come in. Mornay come in. Any stations copy on this channel? Mornay come in. Two. Jacques come in. Stations copy. Uh, Ephraim, if you can get onto channel 3 because I can't copy anybody, just let them know that these on Pimpa are not crossing Triple M. Yeah, Monet was here just two minutes ago, but now, they, now he's gone, now they're crossing over.
It was nice. Let's see if we can get out of here. And I'm gonna have to stop soon and see if we can sort out the batteries and see if we can get push another hour out of them, but they've been beeping for a while now. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. This might be stuck hard. I think we're stuck really hard now. This is when Mark gets stuck, he gets stuck. But we clearly can't go forward. No. There's actually a rock here. Wow. There's a big dip. There's a big dip. Yo, well, what's happened is that this, there's like a gully and the erosion it goes down about three feet. not going to be, maybe we can go around there. I'll oh, go around there. Sure. Hidden in this grass is a vertical drop about three feet. That's what the front wheels fell into. Yeah, you can see one just through there. Thick cover. Oh, my book box fell forward. Sorry, Seb, did you hurt yourself? Ow. They didn't even see me get out of the car. Okay, let's move along. Go up to Impala Plains and open up the back there.
Won't I come in? I have any station copies me those Singwe have now crossed into cross into the western side of the triple M. over triple M into EP. Thanks and come in. Oh yeah, they're down. Yeah, I'm only a four. Any update on that, my dad? Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, anything else, big picker? Thanks, thanks. dwelling birds that had two little ones. There they are, up ahead. I see one of the little, two of the little ones. One of the little ones. the eastern side of them. Sandra wanting to know how far will the leopard cubs have to travel to find mates. Well it doesn't it really work that way. For her, for, for Shivinzi, we hope she will be able to get to, uh, I'm not going to get too close to these birds. I can see one, there I can see both youngsters. Just to the left of the leftmost adult. You see, Sandra, when she grows, when they grow up, she's going to hopefully find the territory fairly close by. Who knows where. But her territory will fall within the territory of males who will become, one of which will mate with her. So it's not like they have to go walking to look for mates. It's just the, where they, wherever they end up finding their own little niche, their own little territory. So... It could be that he's going to have to go far to find a territory and then wherever his territory is he will invariably encompass females territories that will become his mates. But there's no way of knowing how far that will be unfortunately. It could be 10 miles away that they can find that they find a territory for each other. I mean, we have the likes of Mvula who is now here on the northern end of the Sabi sand and he was born in the southern tip of the southern edge of the Sabi sand along the sand the uh, Sabi river. So he somehow has moved the entire length of the Sabi sand in his adulthood. He settled up here in the north, he even crossed the sand river. This is not a, a major thing. Sand River can get pretty low in the dry season. They only wet their toes. But there's no real way of knowing. I mean, we look at Karula's first two, the two females that Karula had, they haven't moved very far. 
they found mates within basically within their mother's home range within their own home range not far from their mothers so they didn't have to go very far we don't know how far Mishu has been and we don't know where Induna is at the moment I think he's been down on Chitwa because there was a story about him fighting with or no was it I don't know, wait, I think that was Mishu supposedly fighting with Mapupunya. Joan wanting to know if they'll ever go into water after prey. I think it depends where it is and it depends on the leopards. Once again, a behavioral trait that you cannot apply to every single leopard. That's not something that you can say be, one leopard will do, all leopards will do it. There are leopards that will swim in the Okavango Delta. The stories when they were making the big dams in Zimbabwe, like Kariba, and the valleys were starting to be flooded, leaving little islands uh, cut off from the mainland, and there were antelope and things that were cut off from the the mainland by the dam being made there were stories of leopard being able to swim several hundred yards to different islands to go and hunt these antelope that were caught on these islands you could take two leopards and both of them will behave differently towards water so it's, it, once again behavioral stuff you can always have guidelines but you can never say for sure that what one leopard does another leopard will do they're individual characters with individual likes and dislikes, as much as much as we are. But there should be no, uh, let's say, half enough with this. It should come as no surprise, really. Anim animals are no different to us humans. We are, after all, all the same thing. We got, we've all got a brain. We've all got a heart. We've all got lungs and red blood pumping through our veins. What we feel and what we do and the way we are is no different to the way animals are. They just don't have the vocabulary, they don't have the brain capacity, they don't have opposable thumbs to be able to build things. But because they don't have to adapt as much as humans have had to adapt to different things, they haven't really evolved that much. So animals still feel, they still think. They still go through a lot of the stuff that we as humans go through. They just don't, aren't able to articulate it very well. Okay. Oh, okay. MJ, thank you. Lynn in Canada, thank you. And hello, Mr. B. Thank you, Brian in the UK. Coming back with the crown flubber. There's another bird there on the ground. We might as well just add that to the list while we're at it. Has this beeped again? Okay. And I just, we're just gonna, I'm just going to have a look while we're waiting for this answer. I just want to have a look. Maybe I can tighten something and get a little bit more out of the batteries. Otherwise, I'm going to have to say goodbye. Sure. Strong wind, eh?
sorry about the camera box. <laughs> back and hopefully this will last it was a, a connection that's come loose again I'm gonna have to redo the whole thing in fact I know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a, a lug on the end a terminal on the end of that wire so that's probably why so the way it was made originally by somebody I don't know who uh, is not a, not, not a permanent fix and I think I'll just try and fix it permanently when we get back to camp but hopefully that will stop the beeping now and maybe even it will eventually solve our problem completely so we don't have to say goodbye yet just yet I don't think taking layers off <laughs> anyone come back with that other bird yet the easy one Now, there are other things I want to find for you this morning. Because I saw a couple of things yesterday that were the first of the season. And I would love to see one or two of them now. Flowers, of course. Part of it. Abby was the first one with the red bull, the horn bull. Thank you, Abby. Bless you, bless you. Bless you. Morning Tony, back in California. We haven't been past the sausage tree today. We can go past it at some point, 
But unfortunately, we reached this point now where the sausage tree has got all its leaves, it's been through its flowers, and it's actually there's no change in it at the moment in the next, probably for the rest of summer. Unless I've missed it, but I've had a really close look at that tree and I can't see any fruits developing on it. So it's at the moment it's just going to look exactly like it, it was the last time we saw it. It's, there's no change to the tree. Finished flowering, no fruits, full leaf. I noticed yesterday walking around Buyatela that there's several small sausage trees in, in the lodge, actually. I was visiting with Fabienne and a number of little sausage trees, obviously not old enough to flower yet or fruit. morning Brent are there any marsupials in South Africa no Brent we don't have any marsupials in Africa period not that I know of no I don't think we have any marsupials not that I don't think I know we don't have marsupials Take a ride down. It's a bit late in the morning, it's getting hot. Take a ride down past the hyena den since we're here anyway. thinking coming to the den at this time of day but I'll tell you why I'm coming here so that I can point the camera somewhere else while I take off a few layers because I was cold this morning and I've got layers on and I was hoping I could distract the camera while I took some layers off but that's not going to happen because there's no one here But I'm still gonna, still gonna, actually no, I'll wait until I find something that you can look at now. I can't strip on a family channel. Family program. Hello David, in Australia, is there a way to financially support the drives? Well David, as far as I'm aware, oh, is that a way to support, I don't think we make any money that way. David was asking <coughs> if that would be a way to financially support the drive. I suppose so put a price on an item of clothing to come off. Don't think we'd make much money though. Um, I think Tara would make ten times more money. Who wants to see my beer belly and never mind. Change the subject. Where are we going? This way. Walk this way. Time for a flower. They're coming. The wattle. I can see the buds. I saw first wattled flower buds a couple of days ago. I'll show you. Yeah, we're close enough. 
close enough to a wattle here to show you. And I was hoping they'd be open, but they're not open yet. Look at these. Oops. Look at these flower buds. Now these spikes are going to burst into the most beautiful little yellow flowers. And while you're looking at flowers, I'm going to... Okay. The shirt's coming off. And then the t-shirt. And then the... <coughs> Yeah, seven I match today. Almost. Yeah. Somewhere there's got to be a wattle that's got a flower already. This is high sandy soils up on the top of a ridge. I'm sure if we go down closer to the drainage lines, there might be a, a wattle with a flower. Vulture just took off way down there, but it might have been from the vulture's nest. Interesting antelope up ahead. A very unusual shape to his horns because that can actually be confusing because he doesn't have the kind of twist. Three young boys here, but it's the one in the middle that's intriguing me. And then there's that one, that's the one that's got horns like his cousin. Slightly older, just across the road. Who are they? No, we've had them already, didn't we? No. Uh, we've already done them. Look, look here on the microphone. loop de loop a looper caterpillar off you go onto the dashboard I wish I knew what your host plant plant was now I wouldn't know where to put you put you on the wrong plant you'll turn into the wrong butterfly actually it's a moth known as an inchworm I think in some parts of the world fascinating little creature Come, um, let me put you on a, I'll put you on a bush or a shawl, that might work. Uh, hmm? A looper caterpillar. Also known as an inchworm, because it inches, it goes one inch at a time. There's Kudubul number four. But did you see that one kudu bull? He had horns shaped almost identical, almost the same as Anyala's horns. Okay. A couple more questions.
Hello Sumac. Actually, I meant to ask you yesterday. I need to start a new thread of email, Sumac. It's gotten to be about number number 95 or something now. Um, Sumac wants to know how many hornbills are there and are there any orchids I can show you? Yes, Ma Sumac, we'll find I'll find you a tree orchid. And in this part of the world we have four. Could be five, could be six different species of hornbill. We have the red bull, the yellow bull, and the grey hornbills, and we have the southern ground hornbills. But it's possible, remotely possible, that a trumpeter hornbill could come by. Um, which, what other? Let me think. That's number five. I know, I mean, the trumpeter hornbills further south in the Sabi sand along the main rivers. This is a little bit too dry for them. They need bigger trees. But it wouldn't be... I wouldn't be... Out of the realm of possibility for trumpeters to come past here one day. Or is it crowned? Crowned or trumpeters? Or both, even. Maybe it's crowned. I forget, because I don't see them. But there are a lot more hornbill species that you find going up into other parts of southern and central and east Africa. Um, here we have the red bull and the yellow bull. In east Africa you get a hornbill that's got a bull that's yellow and red. It's the Fonda Deccan's hornbill. Part of it is red and part of it is yellow. But Sue, I hope that answers your question. Okay, and uh, got, let's just try the top here. This one patch couldn't get you. Didn't get much of that. Sorry, Tar. Let's try in a minute. Is it possible to see? See what? I saw my first dung beetle rolling a ball yesterday. The same species of dung beetle that I saw in FC the night before last on the keyboard. But No, that was the question. Try now. Oh. They have been Florida. Wanting to know with the season changing, is it? We can maybe it'll get that bird. Flew into this little tree. Was on the ground. Uh, in this little combretum, halfway up, right in the centre. Okay, we'll find another one. Um, Dave wants to know about spiders. Starting to see some spider activity. There are spiders around. I mean, they're those that don't ever go away. They're those that, don't, that, that last more than one season. And they're not seasonal. But I think you may be talking about the garden and the golden orbs. Interesting to see them from when they're young as they grow up. We'll see if we can find you some of either one. Baby golden orbs or baby garden orbs. Or young box spiders in the evenings, perhaps. And the community web spiders have been active throughout the dry season. So have the sheet web spiders, so have the tropical tent spiders, all the wolf spiders and hunting spiders have still been active. Um, it's 
small crabellid spiders, comb footed spiders, very tiny spiders. It's just the big ones, I think, that get affected by the weather so much. disagree with the lion and elephant part of the question if I'm getting it right. Jin asking, do the leopard stone protect each other if one of them is injured? Or do they leave them like the lions and elephant? Elephants don't and lion don't really leave them. I've seen a lion pride wait until the injured individual is caught up with them. I've seen them helping an individual. I've seen an elephant in particular. Depends, you know, once again this is not an answer I can give you a straight answer and the, one of the biggest problems I have with answering questions that are relating to an animal's behavior is that I would hate for to give you an answer and for that answer to be taken as gospel and to be uh, uh, perceived as that's how it is all over Africa for that species and it is impossible to do that every area that I've lived in I've seen different behavior out of animals and I think I've lived in more wildlife areas than probably most people in the Sabi sand have even visited I'm talking about the guides of the Sabi sand and the one thing that I am really wary about is telling you something and you going off and saying and later on it coming back that oh, but Mark told me this and it was wrong I don't like to be wrong I will admit when I'm wrong hello boys Okay, tell me what these animals are. But I, in, in, in terms of imparting information, I like to be I like to put it across that when answering a question like this, one leopard will do one thing and another leopard will do another, and if you've got five hundred leopards, five hundred leopards are likely to do five hundred different things. So it's very difficult to answer a question. As far as if one leopard is injured, will the other leopard help it? Um, I don't think so. Just, a, just in, as a general answer to that statement. Um, the thing is that leopards tend to be more solitary. And leopards are not that... They don't really help each other much. They don't have the social bond that lion and elephants do. What's up, boys? You posturing and just... You see, he wanted to get past, but he had to get past rams that were more dominant than him. And with him trying to get past, they thought that he was challenging them. So there's this, yeah, there's this little dynamic going on here with these boys. Maintaining a hierarchy. I hope that sort of gets to that question, I mean, or addresses that question. It's a kind of a difficult question to answer. There are lion that have been left by the pride, there have been elephant that have been left by the herd. But circumstances have dictated that that is the way to go. I mean, with regards to elephant, if elephant have a long way to travel to get to water, for example, and they're crossing very dry terrain, and they've got a newborn, or a very young one and the matriarch knows that if she was to be slowed down by the youngster the whole herd would be in jeopardy and at certain stances like that where a, an elephant is maybe likely to leave a calf because she knows she's got to get her herd to water and save the herd rather than put the whole herd in jeopardy just to save a calf when she can have a new calf it will take a while, but it's, it's, it's better than losing several herd members, a bunch of female kudu off to our right. I'm sure there are people who have 
their own animals, domestic, whether they're dogs or cats. And I'm sure you've read numerous books, or I'm hoping you've read numerous books about either cat behavior or dog, how to raise dogs, how to raise cats. How... And I wouldn't be surprised if almost every one of you who have a connection to a domestic animal has seen something in that animal that goes against what is maybe said in books or what you've been told or even what you grew up believing. And that's all part of what I'm saying is that animals are not programmed robots that all behave exactly the same way. Single cellular organisms perhaps and you know, even insects, I've seen, even in, in, when it comes to insects, I've seen insects do different things, which to me indicate some level of, of thought, some level of uh, cognitive ability. So that's that group of ten and eleven. Yeah. yeah. What did you see? Hippo. Hippo. Oh, it's a dam. So I don't want to hear about it. Don't, 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 don't even mention that. We can't go that way. We can't go that far. So I'm hoping they'll come this way. Do you know how lucky you are? Oh, we do. We haven't seen dogs for months. No. Especially. 19. 19. Wow. Those youngsters must be getting quite big. And they were... They were hmm? I'm still alive, yes, to the world, answering questions. We do. I've just been talking to Dave in Australia. I know. Hello. Say hello to, to, to the Aussies. <laughs> this is a bunch of Australians, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> and England, yes, I heard an English accent there. Yeah. <laughs> Got some some people in the UK too with us, yeah. identifying birds and. The <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Okay, have a lovely day. Bye. Funny enough, one of those couples is a couple from Australia living in Joburg. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's reverse migration. <laughs> so many South Africans have moved to Australia. Not often we get Australians moving to South Africa. But I guess it might be work-related. Hello, little boy. Did we get an answer on these antelope? Or, or did I say their name? Say my name, say my name. talking with uh -huh, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn and Gilly. Lynn in Canada. Gilly Jean. Impala. That's an easy one. Tick off the easy ones. The other thing is that I need to show you, I need to teach you about some of the smaller reptiles if we see them. Because if I had to find one now and ask you what it, what it is, you wouldn't get it. So I'll have to tell you what it is first and then in a few days' time, test your knowledge. Hello, Jippo Geese. Hello, Hippopotamus. Hi. 
Harper. Oh, Tom Harper. So they saw the dogs. What was he saying about trumpeters? Brian just saying I'm right. Heather in Alaska. Heather, hello Heather. How's Sydney doing? Please tell Sydney Georgina says hello. Heather will know what I'm talking about. Hello Hippo. Is that hunger? I see a sloppy ear on the right there. Heather was asking me about those crown plovers earlier and quite typically I was distracted somewhat. Um, T, what's so unusual about that? Mark being distracted. Heather was asking if the crown plovers were approached, would they make a lot of noise and uh, and pretend to have a broken wing like they do up in Alaska? I think you might, are you you're talking about the the, the kill deer up in Alaska, maybe? But yes, some of our plovers do that. And the crown plover is one of them, I think. It'll run off a little way and pretend to have a broken wing to distract them or to draw the predator away from their nest or their youngsters. But they're also likely to dive bomb a predator and drive it off. See, now he has a lovely big wattle in full in leaf, but no flowers yet all out. Interesting the weavers haven't started yet on this tree. I wonder if that has some significance. It could do. Last year if I remember correctly the weavers were already starting on this tree. No weavers this year. Maybe we're going into a dry year. Flower. Uh, the flower we see here quite often is the, ja the jasmine creeper that's growing here. Looking quite pretty. Oh, there is a weaver here. I should have not said its name. But there's a masked weaver hopping through the middle of this bush. And he's probably going to be starting to weave soon. I can't see him now. I don't know if Seb can see. better. Can't really do much about it. It's a wind. It's very windy at the moment. Oh uh, no, I've just put the foam back on it. Probably it was just slipping out of its foam sleeve, the microphone. I was saying there's a weaver in here. I was, before I saw the weaver, I was saying that they haven't started. Um, uh, they haven't started building nests yet but now that I see a weaver here I'm sure in the next couple of days we're gonna see them building did you get to the jasmine flower uh, no. which ones the white uh, anyway there? yeah the white flowers either these ones or those ones up there all jasmine creeper to find that weaver that was in there he's right in the middle and this is a, an interesting tree because it's a buffalo thorn and a knob thorn intertwined they're living so close together with the jasmine creeper growing through the two of them strong wind moonlight sleeping on a midnight lake
five minutes wait. It's only seven o'clock. No, we've only just started drive. Can't be five minutes. Somebody's robbed us of time. Have you heard any beeps out of that thing? No. Neither have I. I think if I solder something on the end of that wire, I think we might solve all our beeping issues, period. It's taken a while to, to source the problem. Oh, that looks like... Okay, that means end of drive almost already. I thought we had about an hour to go still. I was heading up to Cheetah Cut Line. We'll do Cheetah Cut Line later today. We will definitely go to the east this afternoon because I'm just going to drive up and down Cheetah Cut Line all afternoon from 3 o'clock onwards and wait for those wild dogs to come across. I know they will because I'm telepathically. Okay. I'm just mumbling. Carry on. Amber. I don't know why you were breaking up. Try that again. Leopards in Kruger. No, I'm... I'm I can't get any of that. Let me go up Weaver's Nest a little bit. I'm getting snippets. Leopards in Kruger, similar to Cheetah. Okay, let me get through the dip. We didn't go past any of the trees that have orchids in today. Do that later. Um, and I didn't see any of the flowers I saw yesterday. I didn't see any of them today that I could. Maybe this. Maybe t later today. This afternoon. web spider interesting spider the nursery web spider it has a very very rough web very untidy but very large it's like a giant funnel it's not a funnel web spider though but it's called a nursery web because she another knob thorn down she builds this very tight scaffold of silk and all her youngsters stay in a nursery in the middle of it until they've molted a couple of times. But not easy to show you something like that on camera. I will if I get the opportunity. Right, what was that leopard question in Kruger? Ah, interesting question, Amber. So I thought you were comparing leopards and cheetahs, like apples and oranges. But no, this is a comparison in a way. Amber was asking, the, the leopards in Kruger, are they genetically similar like the cheetah? In other words, I think what you're asking is, is there a relatively small gene pool within the population? And the answer is no. The leopard, leopards are a lot more diverse in their gene pool than cheetah. Cheetah right throughout Africa are all from a common stock uh, once upon a time. But leopard, because there's so many of them 
are able to mix their genes sufficiently to have a really good gene pool that they're not genetically similar. No. That's why we can have leopards like Mafufunya looking so different to a leopard like Mishu in terms of how close the spots are and overall coat patterns. Anyways, it appears, it would appear that we've come to the end of our drive. And it, I don't know where the time went. Uh, it was only just getting away, underway. But we had a brown hooded kingfisher calling. We had a lovely morning. I mean, it was it was lovely to see the cubs. I, I I don't know how much of the playing we got to get on camera because just the way they were running and diving on each other. All three of them were playing at one point, uh, especially on that turbine mound. But it was nice to catch up with them. Hopefully, we'll see them again soon. They have crossed over. Karula hasn't. I don't know if Karula has. Dung beetle flying. We'll find one this afternoon. We're going to find a few first this afternoon. We're going to look for things that are the first of the season. At that time of the year to look for the things that are the first of the season. I uh, will carry on with my checklist challenge. We didn't get very far this morning. Woodland, I mean, brown hooded kingfisher. Somebody said they saw a woodland kingfisher earlier in October or September or something. And the po but that was a brown hooded kingfisher. Very distinct. It's got a upper and lower mandible are both red and in the woodlands the lower is black so my name is mark except has been on camera tara has been in final control do join us again at 3 30 central african time and we'll see you a little bit later bye for now Hi everybody, this is Time Fun of Control. Thank you very much for joining us and here's hoping uh, they have found the problematic loose wire. We thought we'd uh, found it yesterday but maybe there's another one that's been hiding away from us and they've managed to find it today. So keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully we'll have another three hour drive this afternoon. But uh, if anybody is wanting to help us out with batteries and things like that, then the online shops are open and all the money will go to helping the drives. And uh, that's from both, both links to the Juma Game Reserve one and also to Shirley's Shed as well. So there's a few designs there if you'd like to choose from them and the money does go to helping the drives. And we'll give you a bit more information on the fireside chat. That's going to be happening at 7 o'clock on Sunday Sunday evening. We're going to be talking about uh, that as well as I think the rhino donations and also having a bit of a wine tasting evening. So Yaku and Eugene are going to be joining us and they're going to tell us a little bit about the wines at the lodge and uh, maybe doing a bit of tasting as well. So I hope you can join us for Fireside Chat on, at 7 o'clock on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening. But uh, if you would like to join us for our next live safari, then please do at 3.30 Central Africa time. And if anybody's wondering about this beautiful picture that Sebastian took, it is of Shavinzi. And if you look closely, you can see her double canines there, her baby canines, as well as her adult ones, both coming, th oh, the adults coming through, and the, the baby milk teeth are still in there. So quite a, an, a unique picture taken by Sebastian. So do enjoy that as well. And uh, here's hoping the wild dogs pitch up this afternoon. Keep your fingers crossed. That'll be fantastic to see you this afternoon. So do take care wherever you are in the world. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.